Hi guys, welcome to Facebook Live. I'm your host, Rose. And I'm your host, Lauren. And today we have a very, 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 very special guest. <laughs> uh, we will get into that in a second. Uh, but Lauren, before we jump in, um, oh, for everybody out there, we are today we are covering back to school motivation and study tips. Uh, it's that time of year. We get all getting back into the saddle again, thinking about how we want to improve our lives, how we want to improve our lives through education, and maybe possibly into our future career path. So Lauren, before we jump in, do you want to go over some do's and don'ts for today? Sure thing. So as Rose said, we're going to go through some ways to stay motivated and help you study as you start with your Penn Foster program. So if you have any tips that you want to share on how you like to stay motivated or how um, you study more effectively, please share those in the comments. Also, please feel free to share this Facebook Live with your friends or anyone who you know that also may be starting school uh, this time of year. But don't leave any personal information in the comments because, of course, that is public. So if you do have a question where you would need to give your student number or any personal info, please, you can just send a message to this Facebook page or call student services. And the number for student services is 1-888-427-1000. If you are not a Penn Foster student yet, but are thinking about possibly enrolling and have some questions, you can talk to our admissions team directly at 1-888-427-6500. So that brings us to our very special person that we are Hello. introducing today. So um, as a gift for back to school season, um, we got you a new host. This is Jess. She's going to be filling in for me, uh, for me for, uh, from here on out. Um, Jess is super fun. You're going to love her. I know I do. And I know Lauren does. And uh, Jess, do you want to just introduce yourself? Tell us some fun facts. Um, you know, let's let's uh, learn a little bit more about you. Awesome. Yeah, quite an intro. Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jess. I am um, going to be managing Penn Foster's social media going forward. So I'm here to share your stories, keep you guys motivated, and let you know what's going on over here at Penn Foster and I will be joining the Facebook lives as the new host so you guys will be seeing me very often and I'm really excited to be doing it so um a little bit about me um besides the fact that I'm I do social media is let me think um doing the Facebook lives is actually um a continuation of a theatrical career that I pursue on the side. Um, I do a lot of community theater, um, community musical theater. My fiance and I do it together. It's our number one hobby. Um, and we love to see shows and we love to perform in shows. So that's one thing that I like to do outside of work. Um, other than that, I also love to read and I love to read and review books. I um, run a public review Instagram account called Bathtub Bookworm where I read books and let you know how I feel about them. So <laughs> outside of um, work, I'm just a huge nerd. So, <laughs> but it's great to meet you guys. I can't wait to get into our topics for today for the first time. Very excited. Yeah, Jess, that was amazing. And I love that you love, I didn't know that you were such a theater nerd. I Yes, I am. I didn't like when I first did fun facts, when I first started, I didn't include it, which was kind of weird. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm currently rehearsing for a production of Once on This Island. It's one of my favorite shows. And so I'm doing that on top of, you know, starting a new job and everything. But it's been really great. I've been keeping myself busy since since my first show back since the pandemic. So really great. Oh, wow. That's going to be nice. That's going to yes. feel very normal to be back yes. doing what you love. Can't better than normal. In front of an audience again, it'll be really great. Yeah. Speaking of, I would like to know what's going on out there with you guys. Is there anything that you've been up to lately that you've had on hold for like the past maybe year and a half um, with the pandemic? Is there anything that you've restarted now and how does it feel to be restarting something? Also, I think that's a great idea and topic for back to school season since because, you know, Penn Foster's open enrollment. We don't have like strict enrollment times. Uh, however, this time of year, you can't shake that nostalgia. Like you just feel back to school. I can, it's the sound of the crickets. I've even noticed like, just like little changes in the weather. I'm like, 
almost like taken back to like third grade back to school season. Sure. Like, Where's my backpack? <laughs> like it's just this wonderful nostalgia. And we see everybody going back to school and our social media. It's just all around us. And this is the time of the year where I think it's a really good idea to kind of re-up, you know, what our goals are and how we want to assess them and how we want to reach them and use that motivation. So today we're going to be talking about how to harness that motivation. We'll be talking about time management, uh, how to create a plan, setting goals, and finding balance between, you know, work, school, theater, whatever it is that you have going on uh, to make sure that you stay on track to your goals. Yeah, th Rose, I think you made a good point that this time of year is so motivating because it is a season where we turn on TV and we see back to school ads. We see kids waiting for the bus outside. And there's a lot of motivation that comes with that this time of year to start up um, your school program or move forward in your school program. But it can be a challenge to keep that going. So I wanted to know, what do you guys think is important, like in terms of staying motivated for school? Why is motivation important in general to like continue on with throughout the school year? And um, what are some ways that um, staying motivated can help you continue? Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like, I mean, going back to, you know, people always say, like, actors always ask, what's my motivation? So I think, you know, when you're performing a part, it's the same thing when you're dedicating yourself to going back to school or starting a new program of some sort, is to ask yourself, what is pushing you? And even if, you know, take a notepad and make a list, you know what I mean? And hang that list on your refrigerator and look at it every day and remind yourself what is motivating you, whether it's, you know, yourself you just really want to push yourself or if you have you know your family or children or anything even if it's to you know give your dog a better life which is something that we can a lot of us can agree to you know <laughs> um just re remembering what your motivations are and reminding yourselves of that reminding yourself of them um i think can definitely be a huge help and remembering those things and remembering why they're important is that driving force that pushes you through those really hard days when you just don't think you can finish another assignment. Yeah, you know, one of the things we've learned from our students is that we hear it time and time again, we hear it from student feedback, testimonials, from um, from our survey, uh, our surveys as well, when you get those surveys through your program, that one of the main motivators for people that come back to school and to finish school is that they want to make themselves proud more than you know, career um, outlook or, or, or you know, career trajectory or any of that stuff where you think like, you know, I think of the big stuff, like go back to school, then, you know, you can earn an education that can someday lead to making more money or getting a promotion or, you know, starting in a new career path. But what a lot of people, what resonates with, with all of us is that feeling of pride and feeling like you're proud of yourself. Like there's really nothing better than that in the world. And I think putting that motivation up, like you said, put it on a list, put it on the fridge, put it by, you know, on your bathroom mirror, wherever you need to see it, just to channel that idea of like what it would feel like to make yourself proud and how motivating that feeling is. There's nothing like it in the world, I don't think. I have For to. sure. And I think too, if you can establish that feeling of pride and motivation early on, you know, we're all going to have tough days where you're just not in the mood to study. You're not feeling particularly inspired to keep going. But if you prioritize your education because you are motivated to reach your end goal, that can help you feel more control over like the fact that it is a priority in your life and help you make that part of your everyday schedule. So it's something that you keep doing even on the days that it feels a little bit harder. Yeah, definitely. I love that you said um, prioritizing your education because that's something that I feel like when you, if you go a long time without being in school and you're trying to go back and you're jumping into something new, you're like, it's an extra, right? It's not like for the last however many years, it wasn't a priority. So you had other priorities and now you're adding something on top. So you might not actually think in your head, you know, I've had these priorities for years. This is just something extra I'm doing. I'm not going to think about it as a priority. But once you reframe your mindset to think about it that way, then it is just as important as some of the other things in your life, you know? 
Yeah. And I think with back to school season too, like there's that idea of motivation is not a constant. We all know this, you know, it does, it, it ebbs and flows. So back to school season is that time of year where like you do get that. It's like a baked in motivation that's just around us. It's just everywhere. We all feel it. And that's really why this is a really good time, I think, to sort of harness that motivation and figure out how it can work for us because it will come and go and that's totally normal. But right now we have it. So let's use it, you know? Yes, absolutely. And even if that's to use your motivation now to plan how you're going to find ways to find motivation in the future when you don't mm -hmm. have it, um, it's just it's an important thing to grab a hold of and make sure that you you use it while you can. 100%. Agreed. So I think, you know, establishing that motivation is one thing. Staying motivated, like we are saying, is a completely different <laughs> beast to tackle. Um, but, you know, part of that could be, too, just like establishing really good study habits and establishing just good life habits that can help you at times when it feels a little bit harder and that like initial excitement wears off. So what are some study tips and study habits that you would recommend for somebody to get into a good routine where the motivation can be one factor, but then the routine can kind of be another to carry um, all of you through your programs in the long run? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think about, you know, when I was in school when I was, I was in elementary school or, you know, junior high school. And it was like every day you came home from school and for, you know, between four and five thirty, like that was the time we sat and did homework, you know, and we were already in school all day. But that was the time that like my parents set aside and said, like, you're going to we're all going to sit here and like, we'll help you with your homework and everything. But this is when we're going to get these things done so that, you know, dinner and bedtime and things like that going forward, you know, it's all routine. So I do think that, you know, even using that mentality as, you know, in any stage of learning is setting aside that time to actually know that those hours or that little bit of time every day or every couple of days, that's when you're going to dedicate to doing your schoolwork. Because if you don't do that, sometimes you just feel like you never find the time. Right. You know, Lauren has a saying where she says, like, you parent yourself. <laughs> Yes, I love that. Yeah. Where you have like somebody has to give the structure, you know, so you have to be the one to to manage your own time, and it is tricky. Time management is difficult, and we do hear from you uh, out there a lot that you know the one thing that you can learn uh, a new skill, like to improve your skills, would be time management skills because they're so essential. It's like how do you get every drop out of your day to have value? So that mm -hmm. leads me to one of my ideas, which I think is crucial for um, having good study habits and stay, staying motivated. And I might get some, huh, looks, but I think this is an absolute crucial step. I think this is the number one step to everything else. And that's getting a good night's sleep. If you have a bad night's sleep, it's going to throw you off for the whole day. You won't be able to focus throughout that day. You'll end up trying to cram too much into the day. It's going to throw up your whole or throw out uh, your whole sleep pattern. And then you end up doing things like going to bed late again, staying up late again, losing that sleep again. Next thing you know, you're behind. You just can't keep up. So I think prioritizing sleep is so, so, so important when you have a lot of stuff going on so that when you wake up in the morning, you're refreshed. You can stay on top of your schedule where you're not sleeping in too late or, you know, trying to sneak in a nap that's or, or just feeling horrible, you know, like it's when you're studying, you need to be sharp. You can't just read and expect it to all absorb if you're not focused. So I really think, and, um, you know, I'm in school, right guys, like we're all at school together and it's hard to do, but you want to make sure you are, um, you're getting that good night's sleep so that the rest of your day, you could schedule your whole day hour by hour. But if you sleep in, or if you take a nap in the middle of the day or you just can't get stuff done like you normally would because you're not on top of your game, it's going to throw it all off. And that can go on for weeks and weeks and weeks. So prioritize sleep. Had to get that out. There. <laughs> I think figuring out like what helps you focus and what takes away your focus is huge. And it is so personal for everyone. Like, I think sleep is pretty universal. But I will say like, one thing for me is like, I can get easily distracted. So 
I sit in my basement because there are no windows where I'm like constantly looking <laughs> out at the people on the street and people watching or like seeing what's seeing if my garbage was picked up, what's going on. Um, and nobody bothers me down here. <laughs> so it's also one thing for me is like telling people in my household, like, I'm getting to work. Don't bug me. <laughs> I need to really buckle down. Um, and, you know, removing those distractions. And I think that that could be something that you all um, can try to if you really need some serious study time. Um, tell your family or the people that you live with, like, hey, I really need the next hour to really get serious about my schoolwork. Can you please leave me alone? <laughs> and that can help you um, be in a space where you're able to focus without something constantly coming at you to distract you. Right. Which is I think too, um, I'm always like always just a huge advocate for like everybody's local library. Like if you live in a house or you live in a situation where it's really difficult to, you know, escape the the people who are there with you, you know, find your local library, find out, get yourself a library card and take those hours that you would be spending at home studying and do them there where there are no distractions. There are no sounds. Everybody's, you know, trying to be as quiet as possible. That might, that could make the difference between, you know, active and passive studying and active and passive getting things done, you know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I think for people who have kids too, I think the idea is more along the lines of, maybe a long study chunk isn't going to work in the same way, you know, if you do have kids and they, you know, they're, they need attention. So it's sort of like study in a small chunk and then, you know, attend to your children in a small, not in a small chunk, that's pretty much a constant, right? But to have your focus kind of be a little bit here, um, but also to be able to like carve out some time to get in a couple of paragraphs. Um, I know some, some parents like to read while their kids take naps that's when they, that becomes their study time. So if there's like a nap time in the day, um, maybe it's like between three and four, that's when they will, they'll do all the, their reading. So it's kind of like this structured period of time because you put your kid down for a nap at a structured time. And then you can have the structure of having an everyday study session, which is good because it's easy to put off a day, put off another day, put off another day. So another big tip is Make sure you're just studying a little bit every day to form those habits. Yeah, and I think to your point, Rose, if you kind of know what your plan for the coming day is, you can even plan like, okay, I know I'm going to have to do school drop off at this time, or I'm going to have to go to a doctor's appointment at this time where I'll be sitting in my car, sitting in the waiting room. I can take school with me and get in a couple of minutes of study time and like really utilize that free time to do your schoolwork. And then if you can kind of like check two things off at once, that's a good feeling. When you feel productive, it just makes you want to be more and more productive, which, um, you know, is something that you should try and see if that works for you. Because, right, it could be really motivating to do that. Right. Absolutely. And I mean, like, like you're saying, you know, productivity and feeling productive. I mean, just on a personal level, I always feel great when I can look back at a whole day and I can say, you know, I got the house vacuumed, I got the laundry done, I read this much in a book, I, you know, worked my job, then you have that full day. But, you know, sometimes some of us can get hard on ourselves for taking time to ourselves, mm -hmm. especially when, you know, we're busy people and we have things going on. And especially if you're, you know, in school, you might say, oh, well, I really need this time to relax, but I really should study. And sometimes you just actually need to take that time to relax. Because if you feel like it's the kind of time where you need to just decompress and do something that, you know, doesn't keep your mind running, if you try to force your mind to work that way, you're just going to be, you know, reading the same paragraph or reading the same thing over and over and over again, not retaining any of it. And yes. I know when I was in school, that was something I did all the time. I'm just one of those people who, if I don't have a productive day, I'm like, this day was a waste. And, you know, so I would take time and I'd say, you know, I studied for four hours last night, but my brain wasn't there because maybe two of those hours I really needed to study and two of them I needed to read a book and take a bath, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, maybe those two hours that I would have given myself initially, I would have actually retained more than I did sitting and staring at the same three pages for four hours, you know? Yeah, I think that goes back to like what we were saying about focus. Like if your brain is just not in the space 
to actually take in the information that you're trying to learn, it's just not going to work. And you're going to feel stressed out. And then it's just, it's not going to be good because you're going to associate your schoolwork with being stressed. Right. And And that's not going to help you in the long run. Burnout is real. Like you can Mm -hmm. burn out. You don't want to burn out. You want to make sure that you are keeping everything balanced um, and which we are going to go over. Um, But no, I think that's very true. Like you're, if you are just spinning your wheels and you're not actually making any progress, you know, there has to be a point when you say to yourself, okay, this isn't working. I don't have a hard deadline, which is one of the greatest things about Penn Foster. You don't have a hard deadline. So give it a rest, you know, relax, um, enjoy something. Don't feel guilty taking time for yourself and always remember that the more that you better yourself, the more you can take people with with you, uplift people around you, make a better life for your kids. You know, it's it's not time that um, it's not time going to just you when you take care of yourself. Even though it feels that way, it, it's going to everybody. So just make sure to prioritize it. It's so important, and it's the best thing for your studies and for for everybody around you. I think too having a a set study plan can help you. A, like make time for the people in your life, because if you carve out a specific time to focus on school, then you know the other free time that you have, you can truly give your undivided attention for the other people in your life. And you're not sitting there thinking, oh, I should be focused on school right now. I should be studying. Like, you know that that time you can kind of have like worry free from doing any kind of schoolwork. Right. So that could help. And I think it could help with burnout too, because if you carve out specific study time where you're not supposed to be doing anything else, where you can't be doing anything else, that might save you some stress um, versus like if you're trying to just like fit in your study time somewhere like, oh, I'm studying, but I really should be doing laundry. Oh, I'm studying, but I really should be hanging out with my kid. Like you won't be thinking that because you did set aside that time specifically for you for one task. Yeah, I think a plan is is so helpful, even if it's just the day before, like you said, like just thinking about like, this is my schedule tomorrow. And here's the thing. So we said cut out distractions, right? We had we've already said that you should cut out distractions, go somewhere where you're not distracted. Like, let's face it, we all have our phone around, even when we're trying to like (laughs) set aside time. It's just a part of, you know, like, what if there's an emergency? What if somebody calls? Like, it's become so part of our lives, even though we really should just lock them up sometimes and unplug. But um, if you have this phone around, which you do, I know you do, because we all do, (laughs) um, try to make it work for you. Like plan in your calendar that you'll be, you know, studying. I want to study tomorrow between four and five. I have an open space there. It's a good time of day for me. I know I'm going to be pretty awake. I know I have some downtime and I know that um, I'm feeling good today. My energy levels are good, so I'm going to make sure that's scheduled for tomorrow. You'll get an alert. You don't really have to think about it until you get it. Um, But yeah, use use the the number one distraction in your life to keep you on target. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but uh, you have it. Look into some planning apps, uh, organization apps, um, and different things that you can use to stay on track because it's it's so helpful. Yeah, I love that actually. I love the idea of setting an alarm to you know, when you're going to start, but then also setting an alarm for the end. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, you don't get, you might get hyper-focused and you might want to keep studying and you might, you know, maybe between four and five is good, but at five, you need to start dinner. You know what I mean? So just giving yourself that hour and knowing that there's a definitive beginning and end to it can definitely help keep the wheels turning. Right, Jess. And you know what else could happen if you go over the time when you have a plan? You could end up staying up too late, not getting enough sleep. And not getting enough sleep. <laughs> and all those your day you gotta sleep. <laughs> next day could be totally thrown off. It's so important. It is, it's true. Sometimes you only have so much time to study and like maybe you really should just stick to that time so that everything else stays on track and your next day is good. And you know, exactly. I'll stay. Absolutely. I think too, like time management is hard. And like a lot of these tips that we're suggesting are not things that are easy to change overnight. But one thing that you could do is like use like, for example, like getting better at time management as like a mini goal that you set for yourself. And like another way to stay motivated overall is to set larger goals and then break those down into smaller goals that you can use to complete that larger goal. So 
if your end goal is to graduate or to, you know, get a certificate or a degree or a diploma to like help you get another job, that could be your end goal. But a goal, you know, before that could be get better at time management so that you can study better, get more sleep so that you're more focused, um, you know, complete a class a week or something like that, whatever makes sense for you in your program to help you achieve that bigger thing that you're setting out to achieve. Um, so, you know, I think maybe keeping track of those smaller goals could be really motivating because you feel like you're making accomplishments happen along the way. Oh, right. definitely. You guys small, think? Goals. small goals are super important. Absolutely. Otherwise, it, it feels so unattainable when you just look at one mm -hmm. big goal. You know, you have to look at how far you've come and, of course, celebrate all of those steps along the way. Absolutely. And I mean, like you're saying, Lauren, if you just, you know, if you're the kind of person who's like, I'm going to complete a course a week. Great. If you're the kind of person who, you know, gets bored a little bit more easily and can't focus on one steady thing, you know, do a couple courses at once. That's kind of the beauty of Penn Foster versus, you know, a traditional school. I mean, you know, you go to a traditional school, you get a semester, you have your classes. There are certain days on certain days of the week. Whereas, you know, with these programs, you can pace yourself. So you can choose to do one course beginning to end, or you can treat it like a traditional school um, situation and pick a couple courses and do them every other day, like you would do if you were you know, in a traditional setting. So, you know, it's all different based on everybody's, you know, way of organizing things in their head. But it's really great to have that flexibility, especially, you know, when you don't have a ton of time and you're trying to create a plan and meet those long term goals. Oh, definitely. I think that's a, another good point, too. Like, when you are looking for those long term goals, not to overwhelm yourself, you know, and to kind of um make things more attainable and more understandable like your your brain can only handle so much stuff at once <laughs> so it's like making sure not to overdo it you don't want to overdo it in any direction if you overdo it like we said earlier it's just going to lead to that burnout feeling yeah i think you know we've been talking a lot about burnout and taking care of yourself i think you know one big tip that we wanted to really talk about today is how to find balance because Jess, you mentioned this when you were talking earlier like we're all different we learn in different ways we have different goals we have different lives and you have to figure out what's right for you and finding balance for you is going to be different than it is for somebody else so um my tip that i'll give in terms of finding balance is like don't compare yourself to anybody else don't compare yourself to the expectation of what you think is success based on like how you see that happen in other people. And, you know, just figure out what it is that makes you happy, what it is that makes you motivated, what helps you focus and kind of come up with a plan to achieve your goals and succeed in school based on what works for you and make sure that that fits into the balance of the rest of your life. That's what a good point. Think? I was thinking about what you were saying about um, not comparing yourself to other people because that's super important because everybody has a different journey. There's no way that it's going to, you know, you could like plug into somebody else's life and be satisfied. There's always something else going on where that person then isn't satisfied. But I think what's interesting about that is like, don't compare yourself to other people, but look to other people that have done it and find the inspiration in that. So you know, we have lots of testimonials. We have our podcast. You can check them all out on our website. Um, but I think following sometimes in the footsteps of of people who have done it is very, it makes you be able to kind of see that you could do it. It's this extremely motivating feeling. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to kind of bring that up because you don't want to compare yourself to other people, but you can be lifted up by other people. And that is the most rewarding to find um, have a support group around you that helps and to, you know, find motivation and inspiration from really inspirational stories. Absolutely. I mean, just going, just coming from someone who just reads a lot, you know, I mean, I read a lot of fiction and, you know, sometimes reading stories, even about fictional characters can motivate you to complete certain tasks and things. So if, if, 
fictional people can make you feel that way reading actual stories from actual people who have been in your position and have done it and have gotten through it really can make the difference between like a day where you're like I cannot conceivably do this versus like I can squeeze in an hour you know right oh definitely luckily for everyone watching we do have a collection of stories from students just like you where they talk about their experience balancing their life, balancing school, balancing their goals, everything they have going on. And um, they talk about how they managed all of that and, um, you know, where they're at now in their school and career journey. It's our Alumni Spotlight podcast. And our Backstage Buddy Does will drop that link in the comments right now so you can check it out. Yeah, there's so many different podcasts in there, too, and different stories from different programs. So if there's a program that you're interested in, it's nice to hear, you know, how somebody else completed it and what they're doing now. I just think that's a really, uh, it's extremely motivating. Um, but as far as finding balance and going back to that, I think it's very important. And this is a, a key tip for, I think, a lot of our viewers out there is that I think a lot of us try to take on sometimes too much or we're the go-to person at home. We're the person that um, keeps everything in order in our family lives and maybe even in our careers. But as far as balancing how you're going to do it all, no one person can really do it all. And sometimes you have to ask for help, you know, so keep your support group there. Remember that there's no shame in asking for help. We all just need it. We can't split ourselves into 14 different people and do 14 different roles. Like we need that support sometimes. So we have to lean on other people sometimes and to get stronger. And, you know, that could mean through education, that could mean in your career path, um, that could mean as a provider for your family. It's important to think about the here and now and the sacrifices you have to make and ask some of your support group to help you with that. And, you know, in the future, you're going to just have so much more. Um, it's, it re- I like using the word strength because it is strength. There's going to be more strength behind you in the future. Absolutely. And one great way if you want to connect with other Penn Foster students and you know, support each other as you're all doing the same thing, join the student community or log into the student community if you've already joined. There are plenty of discussions going on where you can get to know other students. And definitely, I think it helps to feel like you're not alone in this. Like sometimes online school can feel like it's just you and your computer. um, And that's it. But that's not the case. There's whole bunch of other students just like you and we have an awesome community manager his name is sean his nickname is sean cares because he really does care (laughs) so um you know he's a great resource to connect with too but as always too like if you need academic help you can call us can connect with your instructor um we're definitely here for you we want to see you succeed and we want to help you meet your goals so reach out if we could help you do that because You know, this is exciting for you that you're on your um, journey with your education and it's exciting for us to see that happen. And we want you to, you know, get that job that you want or get that degree that you want, um, get that promotion that you want. So however we can be of help. And Penn Fosters, we're here to make that happen. I mean, that's entirely why we're so flexible. We're so affordable. It's why we're accredited. We're here to support you in any uh, way that you need. So it kind of reminds me of our, I think it was our 2019. The years are kind of blurred together. Um, But I think it was the 2019 graduate of the year, Victoria Winters. She completed her, she she ended up um, having health issues in high school, had to drop out of high school, saw a commercial for Penn Foster in her hospital bed and enrolled from her hospital bed and became a graduate and then went on to move on to college. Actually, we should check in with her because I wonder if she's finished with college yet. But um, she made it happen and the reason why she could make it happen was because um you know there was there is a flexible form of education out there that is affordable and it's at penn foster and that's what we're here for we're here for stories like victoria so that she can reach her goals um, no matter what she's going through and if victoria can do it it's likely that you can do it too and um don't forget that i mean that's why we're here so one more time before we Before we wrap up today, don't forget to call if you're a student, you need support or if you need any help with your program or if you need any help with um, any any of that stuff, you can call student services at 1-888-427-1000. And if you were watching today, you got that back to school spirit, you're pumped, you're ready to go, you're harnessing that motivation, you want to enroll, 
give us a call at admissions, 1-88-427-6500. And that's also good if you have any questions about um, the whole student experience or what you should enroll in. And we're here for you for that too. Awesome. awesome. Let's also give a big round of applause for Rose since she is now going to be passing the torch. You've been <laughs> doing this for so long and, you know, helping everybody and getting stories out there and they are huge shoes to fill. And I am extremely glad that I got to do a Facebook live with you um, before I take over. So let's just Rose, so you're incredible. And um, thank you for everything. Yes. Thank you. This I feel like there's no one better to pass the torch on to. So this is really wonderful. And thank you for that. That was a little emotional. <laughs> Um, I will miss you, Rose. <laughs> I will miss these every two weeks, of course. Um, but the fun thing is, is that I can tune into Facebook Live every two weeks and see you guys, and I can join in the conversation in the comments as much as I want. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yes. So thank, thank you, you so much, and for all of you guys out there signing off, uh, it was it was great over the last few years spending every other week with you, and I wish you all the best. Best of luck, and don't forget, Pum Foster is there for you to accomplish your goals forever. So always here. All right. Thanks, thank Rose. Jess, welcome. And thank, thank you all you for guys. joining. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Yes, thank you guys. All right, bye. bye.